the video you're going to want to share with your friends. High five on the way in the door. Hit that thumbs up as you enter. That's like giving us a virtual hug. And we'll get you guys straightened up. Stacy's right here. Don't you worry. And we're going to get right into it. First thing I'm going to talk about is milk. I don't want to hang you guys out for the whole video and say, wait to the end. No, we're going to get right into it first. But you need to wait for the people to come in, don't you? Oh, They're my right gosh. There. we got notifications going off. Better turn my volume off here. Doug and Stacy right here live, live, live. Everybody wants to see Doug and Stacy talking about that food. Thank you for uh, understanding that I needed a little break there for a second. I've been in some prayer and reflection, looking over all these things that are going on. Man, it's breakneck speed out here, I tell you. It's almost too much for one man to bear. And I just, you know... I'm not really doing nothing, just hopefully just trying to help you guys ahead of it so you can be prepared with your supplies, not being caught off guard like you were, you know, 2019, 2020, okay? Because that totally caught everybody's surprise. Surprise, surprise! And if you guys, if you just spend any time at all on the internet, you can find them talking about that years ago, talking about that. Like even that thick guy was talking about it. Alex Jones was talking about it. That it was going to be some viral thing. And that the jet. And they did it. And so just remember that. So you can find that information. For, so that's all I'm trying to do is keep you ahead of it. That's all I'm trying to do. But we're going to get right into it right now. Uh, if you missed the beginning of the video. Always go back to the uh, uh, beginning. Because you can watch them for free. Replay anytime. It just takes YouTube a little bit to upload the yeah, video. Because you can watch them. There she is. She's I'm got her trying volume. to turn it down. I'm doing that now. All right. Make sure you hit that thumbs up. Let me hit my thumbs up. Thumbs up. And then I'm getting right into this SmackDown. Okay. If any of y'all have been following our channel for a little while, you know that some of the reasons why we came up and lived on 11 acres and grow 90% of our own food and poop in buckets and use 100% rainwater and all this kind of business is because we were you know, not feeling that well about the food. And we started looking into the food and we started finding out some things about the food. And then it just kind of made some kind of a common sense that if you can't pronounce stuff in the food, maybe you shouldn't eat the food. Uh, you know, so we just went to that more holistic God earth approach. You know, he gave us the seed, which is going to give us the plant, which is going to give us the food and also provide another seed. So it's an abundance program. A man's program is Develop a seed that does not produce the seed, so you have to buy the seed every single year. Kiss the ring. That's not the program. Okay. So we figured out it was the milk that was really bothering us, and so our journey began. We're up here. We're growing our own food. I started healing up. So through the milk, I was finding out that I had psoriasis really bad on my elbows. I had really bad snot in my nose. Uh, waking up snotty, like almost gagging snot, throwing up in the bathroom snot, that kind of a really bad situation. So I cut dairy totally out of my life, 100%, uh, very rare with the ice cream. Stacy, if we do get it, she gets very good like ingredients that you can pronounce and even old school stuff. Uh, even with the Amish, I might have that a couple times and it was pretty much okay with me. But let me tell you guys what's going on with this. Now, a lot of you guys might know this. I'm going to get right into it. Most of the milk produced in the United States is banned in Australia, New Zealand, Japan, and all of the EU. It's banned because of growth hormones that give the cows to make them produce more milk. It's called RBGH, and y'all can do your homework on this stuff. Make sure you write and it down. And then you'll see a lot of the, you know, you see them on the labels, you guys. It's been on there. This came out. This has been a while ago. And so yes. they put it on there and it'll say these cows are not treated with that. You'll right. see it on the labels. Right. So there's the hype right there because they're already trying to distance themselves. Uh, all these uh, countries have banned it because of how damage can be to your health. Europe has banned a hormone over 20 years ago, but yet regularly authorities in the United States continue to approve it every year. The countries that have banned the use of the recombinant bovine growth hormone, RBGH, in food production are Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, and Israel. Interesting list. <laughs> These countries have implemented controls to track down growth hormone abuse in livestock, particularly in dairy cows, to ensure compliance with the ban. Okay? The regulations are part of the broader effort to ensure food safety, which, you know, if you just leave us alone and let us have our own little neighborhood cows and teats, <laughs> uh, 
we would be just fine. Okay, so I just wanted to hip you guys to that, that just like we talked about before in other videos, they allow uh, food into our system in America that they ban and outlaw and they know are problems in other countries. Okay, so here we go with that. Now we're moving on to the new thing, this new synthesized world that we're trying to move into where everything natural is out and everything man-made is in. <laughs> no, thank you. Fake milk is real news. A synthetic alternative threatens traditional dairy farmers, right? This is an article put out by NBC News a little bit ago. And basically, they're just talking about uh, perfect dairy foods as a company creating synthetic milk alternatives. It's similar to milk that it consists of casein and whey, the proteins found in milk. However, a cow was never used to produce the product. Instead, the animal-free dairy product is made in a lab using genetically engineered yeast programmed, programmed yeah. with DNA to produce the same proteins this is not going to end well, y'all. This is not going to end well. Found in cow's milk. Silicon Valley-based Perfect Day Foods. So if you see that label, please try to tell your friends. It sounds <laughs> so perfect. Doesn't it sound so good? <laughs> That's it's why Perfect Day Foods. Yeah. You can just imagine the That's happy cows in California yeah. with the golden sun on them, right? Oh, get out of here, y'all. Please. I just wanted to talk about the milk. Now, Stacey, we're going to pivot because we want to give you all the information so you're not hanging out a long time. Because if you hang out for a long time, it's going to be for about the other talk we're going to do in a few minutes. Stacey's going to talk about nuts and what well, watermelon. I'm going to talk about well, watermelon now. Watermelon. All right, here we go. Watermelon, y'all. So, they've been doing this for a little bit. <laughs> like looks like a few years, possibly. So, there's inject. they're injecting the watermelon. So I know a lot of people have a favorite fruit or a favorite vegetable, and you might just eat it all the time. But we talk a lot here about eating in season. So it's really important to eat in your seasons because, you know, a lot of the times the farmers, I know a lot of grocery stores will work with local farmers and even bring them into the grocery stores. We have our farmers markets during the season. And then that's the time we really should be getting our fruits and vegetables and produce. Now, what they've been doing with watermelon is they're injecting them to make them look juicier and redder. And I was just like, you know, I just kind of saw that and I thought, oh, you know, that didn't phase me at all. But are you ready for all the stuff? <laughs> I mean, I couldn't Boy, believe it. It's your fault. It's your fault because you guys won't buy the paley looking watermelons even with the seeds in them. People say, we don't like the seeds. So now they genetically modify well, the seeds out. Well, the, the thing is, is with a watermelon, we'll just talk. Make sure you get your watermelon with seeds. Yes. Because if you want it, them to keep reproducing, you need a seed. And it's also going to help the flavor. Yeah. But definitely, I would not support seedless watermelons, even though people like them because you don't have to worry about the seeds. But on another note, watermelon seeds are incredibly nutritious. So I did a video on it. What's it called? I have no you idea. You can roast them. I don't, it was a long time ago. Maybe we need a new watermelon video. A, no, we'll watermelon. The watermelon seeds are really good. Yes. You can roast them just like you would do pumpkin seeds and things like that. Excellent. They are very high in nutrition. So that's on another note. But let's talk about all the lovely things they do to watermelon. Yes. You guys ready? Are you writing this stuff down? Please write this stuff down. May, uh, we're going to make sure you share the video with your friends. And we'll probably even send this one in an email because it's just that important. Hit that thumbs up and hit it. Okay. I have to I have to sound out the letters it's on so this. much. So this is 4-chlorophenuron. 4-chlorophenuron is used as a growth accelerator. Um, it's used a few days before the sale. So whoever is get, getting the watermelons, you know, they're going to use it to help them accelerate their growth. As well as a lot of times they use nitrogen, which makes them quick growing, and it's considered a toxic element also. Now, this 4-chlorophenuron, oh um, it is to help increase the size, make them heavier, and, and all that. So that's one thing they start to do. Because, you know, a lot of you guys, will we go to the store, and then you get you know, these fruits and vegetables, and you know, how are they supposed to mass produce them? Besides that, they're going way over a thousand miles to get to you. So then they're losing a nutritional value. Then they're injected with things and things, and they're sprayed with things that we're going to be ingesting. So they oh, are also... Not we. 
<laughs> well, you, but sometimes, like, you know what I mean? If we go out it's or you so go bad. somewhere... We, we can't even hardly do it now. It's like before we were having troubles, but now, like, trying to go out and eat somewhere is like... <sighs> man, it's like... Almost like you're trying to kill yourself. Go ahead. <laughs> now, they're putting these colors in there. Like, uh, is it a methanol yellow, which linked to cancer? Erythrocyne B and red B. That's the big one that they're injecting to make it look pretty in red. Um, it's, it's causing like digestive issues and upset stomach. I can't tell you the amount of people that I know because, you know, wa watermelon is, uh, it's just mostly water. It's like 96% water. So when you eat watermelon, you know, it should just go right through you. How many people do I know over the past years that say they can't eat watermelon it makes their stomach hurt or they get upset? Yeah. It could be because of this dye. Maybe they got one that has that kind of dye. How does it fall in the dirty dozen since it's loaded with water? It's, does, it, does it make the list ever? Or is it hovering no, up in the a, top 15, 20 maybe? I don't think it's in the top 12 this year. It's not yeah. in the top 12, but. No. Since, uh, you guys watch out for because like strawberries but, and stuff like that are high on the dirty dozen list which means they because of their water uh, compound they suck in a lot of the pesticides and sprays that they put on the product before it reaches you so these fruits and vegetables and we'll talk about watermelons too but any of them they, they're all they're all harvested unripe they're pretty much raw so they need a way to get ripened up so you know, pregnant women, when they need to, you know, start labor, they give them oxytocin. They also use oxytocin for abortions. They, to, to accelerate the ripening, they will use oxytocin on the watermelons too. So I was like, oh, that's just great, isn't it? Um, let's see. I don't want to miss anything. I wrote all my little notes down. The other thing is they use calcium carbide. And it really that helps to release the ethylene when it comes in contact with moisture, and that will also help it ripen. What's it called? Calcium carbide. And this is linked to like mild headaches or down to deadly cancers. So the one thing you want to look at when you look at a watermelon or any of your fruits and vegetables, no matter what you're doing, if you're buying this from, from the store, make sure that you rinse them off, the outer part of it. Um, it's very, very, very important. Listen, to I just typed it in, you guys. I hope you're taking your notes. Write these names down that we tell you. I just simple calcium it. carbide. Calcium carbide. I just did a simple search on calcium carbide. Calcium carbide treatment of food is extremely hazardous because it contains traces of arsenic and phosphorus. Once dissolved in water, the carbide produces acetylene gas. Ethylene? No, acetylene. Oh, okay. Acetylene gas. And acetylene oh. gas may affect the neurological system by inducing prolonged hypoxia. <laughs> and then the carbide. What, what are we doing? Yeah, the calcium carbide. It's also used for mangoes, bananas. I mean, they use it for other fruits and vegetables. Don't think we're just talking about like watermelon. You guys are going to be is... sharing this video like crazy, y'all. Tell your friends what they're eating. No wonder everyone is so jacked up, isn't it? So the carbides that they put on it, it's like a powdery. It can be white powder, yellow powder. Sometimes <laughs> if you've ever gotten a powdery watermelon and you just think it's dust, it's probably that. So a lot of you that are getting Not watermelons, here now. make sure that you are wiping the watermelon off because let's say you go to cut it, it could go in the inside. I mean, it's very, very important. Because we live okay. off the gravel. So, <laughs> what does that mean? We got white dust all over oh, yeah, our watermelon. That's true. <laughs> yes, we do. Yeah. Easy now. Don't be so focused. You can't. I know. I know. I know. Here. So, a good way to check. So, there's some little checks. If you guys do get watermelon from the grocery store, okay. Um, and you know this one. If it doesn't taste good, it has a lack of taste. I can't tell you the amount of produce oh, that you get that doesn't have a good taste. And eggs and everything these days, yeah. So these growth enhancers that they give them are going to make them not taste very well because they're, you know, taken from the vine when they're raw still. So that's one um, because you want it to ripen fully on the vine. You know, the sun and the rain and everything, you want it to fall off the vine when it's ready. So that's going to be what you want. Um, then for the watermelon, you can give it a water test. If you get like a piece, a nice chunk of the watermelon or even cut a slice, stick it in 
a little pan of water, let it set for a few minutes and see if the water start, starts to kind of turn red or pink. Pretty much that's going to be, they're using those dyes on your watermelon, okay? If it's pretty much clear, it's gonna be a regular, you know, natural watermelon. Um, another one that they do, because they do inject these. So they were saying, if you leave it out on the counter, you know, after you get it for a few days, and maybe if you start noticing like any moisture coming out of it, if there's a little crack, sometimes have you ever gotten a watermelon where there's like juice kind of coming out of it? It could be because of that. All right. So that's another one. Um, and then another one is when you go and you cut your watermelon open and you know, when you cut it, it should be nice and smooth. Have you ever gotten a watermelon when you open it, there's some like big cracks in it. And that could also be part of it too, that it was, you know, adulterated by whatever they're doing to it, if they're injecting it or whatever. So that's another way you might be able to tell, okay? Now, there is a trick. I know a lot of you guys, how do you pick the best watermelon? Well, when you look at the watermelons, and here's another good one, because a lot of these watermelons that have been ripened too soon, um, or other produce, um, but especially like your melons, they'd have that nice yellow bottom where it was sitting in the field. So if you have that nice yellow bottom, um, generally that's going to mean that it was ripened in the field and you're going to be safer because how many, how many watermelons when you're at the grocery store, you go to pick up those round seedless ones, they're green all the way around and perfect. So those would be, I would very suspect, I would say. Okay. Um, so what do you do? You're going to definitely buy organic. That's going to be very helpful if you do that. So buying organic, support all the local farmers grow your own. If you have an area in your yard or somewhere, I mean, it just like what we did here, he just made me a pound, a pile of dirt. If you have an old mulch pile, if you do have a compost pile, put some seeds in there. You're going to have phenomenal melons there. So yeah, grow your phenomenal own. Melons. <laughs> go to the, go to the <laughs> farmer's market, you know, get on a co-op, a farmer's co-op or a community supported agriculture, CSA. Start supporting. We need to get so micro. We need to quit supporting these big stores. Oh my gosh, y'all. Please try to cut them out of your life the best you can. Eat in season. That's so, so important. And just, you know, it's hot. It, you know, you can't, you, you're just not going to know. But you know, you got to talk to folks who are growing the food that you're going to buy them from if you get them at the farmer's market. Kind of ask them their procedures and the how they do things, you know what I mean? Like, and when you go to the farmer's market, they're going to have a name on their, you know, banner or whatever. Then you can go to their website. You, can do you a can Google find search. Out. Just turn around, do a quick Google search. Yeah, because it'll tell usually their families, <clears throat> you know, there's just different things. So you can check on a lot of these people. Or just ask them and just, you know, and even ask them if they really did grow it. Because there's a lot of these people that come to the farmer's market and they're just resellers. But if you ask, just don't assume, like if you see somebody, you might say, oh, they're not putting chemicals on. Because a lot of folks think the Amish don't put chemicals on, but they do. And even though their tomatoes real bad, they like the hot house tomatoes, right? So you just, just got to ask questions and we just really got to tune this in because this food stuff, that's why they say you are what you eat. Okay. So well, let's talk about a lot of this stuff, that red dye and all those things. A lot of these are linked to Parkinson's, childhood leukemia. A lot of these things that I'm talking about. Study show. Non-Hutchkin's lymphoma, cancers. So Behavioral disorders. Oh, no. Wait. Yeah. So there's a lot of stuff going on with these chemicals. These forever chemicals that they're putting on our foods. And then they're saying, you know, you read about the chemicals. They say they use it to ripen or do this and that. And then you go and find out the horrible side effects. And then you look at all these people running it's, around that have MS and Parkinson's and they're listen, having ALS and they're having all these different listen, issues going on that it, we never had before. It's hardly. no different than the f commercials on the TV, on the pharma side, where they tell you what's going on. And then they list all the ingredients where your head's going to explode, your face will fall off, your nose is going to blow up. You know what I mean? Your eyes going to grow three. You could get this and you could get that. And people go in and they say, doctor, please give it to me. I have stories where people demand the fluoride in the water. I have stories where people demand right now in Missouri, they're trying to demand. If you live in Missouri, by the way, get wake up and smell this coffee. If you live in Missouri, they're trying to demand glyphosate in the food production. 
They're acting like if we don't have glyphosate in our food production in Missouri, we are going to be leaving farmers behind. And you're supposed to go to the Big Ag website and put in your voice so we don't have to leave Big Ag behind. Will you get out of here already with that? Please share this video with your friends within the first 20 minutes. We gave you some food stories that you can use. I'm not and done yet. Now, hey. <laughs> I got more two, that you guys part, are going to freak out. Part two is coming up. <laughs> right now we're going to talk about our sponsor. <laughs> All right. The Missouri Tea Company, where we have chocolate tea, rest and digest tea, and the emergency candle we back have in stock. A lot more. Yes, oh, back they're, in they're stock. probably gone now. But the emergency candles, everyone's already got theirs. If not, they'll be there tomorrow. Uh, but they're already out the door and on the way. Uh, we have some other sizes available. Plus, we have all of our tea. And if you guys haven't got one of Stacy's books, you should get one. And uh, the new booklets are in. Keep them busy for a second. We'll be Should right I start? back. Should I start? No, no, no. Just small talk them right now. Don't give them the meat until we get off this commercial. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I mean, I'm just telling you. So, like, if, if anything else, for a lot of you guys, you need to start, like, growing something. Because I don't trust anything at the stores at all. I, I mean, I really don't. It's crazy. And if you are, you know... Do organic. You can, there's a lot of places like it. these places do, do our organic um, or start growing things. And here's another one. We have our friends at Barefoot Microgreens. Grow microgreens. You can get a microgreen kit from barefootmicrogreens.com. Oh man, and you guys start can grow growing your own. Right on your counter. And that way you're getting nutrient dense food that doesn't have all these crazy things. Plus the homesteading life booklet is oh, in oh other side's better yeah the other side's better <laughs> you're so cute right so that right there walks you through the first several steps that you can uh, take if you want to live the homesteading life those are in <laughs> and they're hot look at that <laughs> all right so there's the, the missouri tea company has all that stuff for you guys go check them out that helps us uh you know do what we're doing and also takes care of our family. We hand pour these, y'all. We had to hand pour all those candles you bought uh, just for you. And we hand pour all these 100% unrefined beeswax. No chemicals, no soy. 100% candle right here. Wax uh, wick is cotton. We don't use any of the synthetic wick or anything. And we hand pour them for you And Rand B. Magnuson said a neighbor fell yesterday in a small rock, put a deep gash on his head. He did not want to go to the ER, so I got my stitches out. And wow, it helped stop the bleeding, and you can hardly tell today. Yeah, just keep, you got to keep putting it on there, and as it heals, it'll just keep pushing it out, and then it'll go away, and it'll be all healed up. That's the stitches. But just make sure when you get it, you can make sure you clean it first. Oh, we're getting lit right now. That's the herbal stitches, y'all. It's a proprietary brand of herbs that Stacy and I put together here. And the Amish uh, blend it up and put them in the bottle for us, right? So you guys actually help them with the Amish too. It's really a beautiful thing what we have going on here. Family members, the Amish. Uh, but this is Herbal Stitches, and that's at the Missouri Tea Company as well. So you guys can go there and load up. Okay, now we're going to get on to part two of this wickedness. Okay, so how many of you are familiar with the wonderful company? The wonderful pistachio. Why do they the always have these names? But yeah, isn't it funny? <laughs> the perfect company, the wonderful company. So the wonderful company makes the wonderful pistachios, and I know many of you guys like those. Wonderful almonds and the palm, P-O-M, pomegranate juice, the palm juice and the pomegranates from the wonderful company. Are you familiar with those? Well, EWG, the Environmental Working Group, and if you guys don't follow them, you can get on their email. They'll send you alerts and what's going on with the food systems and different things. The big one they're after is them because they're spraying Paraquat on their stuff. <laughs> okay. Now, they found that, EWG found that they're their second largest producer or sprayer in California of this toxic chemical. What's it called? Paraquat. P-A-R. That's linked to Parkinson's. A-Q-U. I don't even know how to spell it. Like it sounds, P-A-R-Q-U-A-T. A toxic chemical that is widely used as an herbicide plant killer, primarily for weed and grass control in the United States. Paraquat is available. This is a simple Google search, y'all. We're going to give you all these names. Please write them down. Get your own Google search on. Use your own Google eyes so you you know believe your own lion eyes. They right use, on your food. Listen, 
56,000 pounds of it in 2021. They use Paraquat as available as a liquid and use it in various strengths. Linked for, to Parkinson's. It's linked to childhood leukemia. And that one's linked to non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So it's also banned in 60 other countries. I was just going to get ready to say that. Countries, <laughs> Except here. Including China and Turkey and Spain. So, oh you know, but we can have it here. Stay till the end, because right when we close out, I'm going to let you guys know exactly what's going on, why you're eating all these chemicals. But make sure you smash that thumbs up, would you? So, if you guys are getting paraquat-infested, wonderful pistachios, <whistles> please stop. <laughs> you, know, I don't, you know what I'm saying? You're wondering why you're trying to eat healthier, and you're doing this, and things hey, aren't happening. You're wondering why you're it might be because we're ingesting all these toxins so right. what it is is you need to really look at your source you know there's you can get organic farmers you know that raise almonds you can find them you can find a lot of things on the web try to find these and source them out where you know where you're getting your food and then the food that you're going to be getting is going to be much more nutrient dense you're not going to need to eat as much as you're eating now to get the nutrients and even to fill you up um, because when you grow and grow, like when we grow our greens here and our, our fruits and vegetables, they really do fill you up. You don't need to eat as much as that you would normally eat from the stuff that you get at the grocery store. The closer you eat to the vine, the more nutrition you get for your spine. Right. He's, you're with it today. Is that all right? Yeah. That's it's okay. Right. Did it kind of go? Uh, it's okay. It's okay. okay. That's where your nervous system is. Well, your nervous system is everywhere. your body, but yeah, that's the channel. Yeah. The channel. So, what do you guys think about all this? I think it's disgusting. I think everybody, everyone needs to start growing their own watermelons. Or, no, or you know the little old guy that with his overalls, with his watermelons in the middle of summer? That's when you get them. So, look forward to your watermelons when it's watermelon season and it has a nice yellow bottom because it's been sitting in the field. Okay? Don't get watermelon all the time because you just like watermelon because... You cannot trust what is going on. And try to eat it when it's in season. Like, don't go to the store right now and buy a watermelon where you live if you live in America because there's no watermelon to be had. Like, they have to ship that watermelon in from somewhere. Don't forget, we're going to have all this juicy information along with a lot of other stuff at the Homesteading Life Conference. So, you guys should get your tickets. We we're very close to being sold out. And once these uh, these go, these tickets, is adios amigo. And then you'll be like, I wish I would have went. So you might want to check that out, okay? Because we're going to have a really good time. I'm dropping the link in the comments. You can go to homesteadinglifeconference.com. And then you hit the tab up there and go to the spring event. Because we have a couple events. Stacy has her own event that she does for the ladies. Hey, ladies. And not those pretend ones, because we don't play that, homie. <laughs> so all the ladies could come and uh, hang out with her and have a woman's retreat. And that's in October. We moved it to early October. Uh, and that'll be fun if you guys come to that. She had a really good time last year. Yeah, it was time so last year? much fun. I loved it. Yes. If you want to learn all about your health and be with a bunch of cool ladies, it's going to be amazing. Yep. So, yep. So those are two events right there. We're working on the August thing. But I'm going to have some twists and turns for that one. So stay tuned. And then Kimber said watermelon made her sick so i haven't bought them in years i can't tell you over the years how many people say that watermelon makes me sick so what is glypho say okay let's look it up honey we'll look it up together glypho say no we, she probably hasn't heard of roundup glypho is a widely used herbicide that can kill certain weeds and grasses glypho works by blocking an enzyme essential for plant growth and it and it's what when you, you go and they use that Roundup that you that horrible weed killer they use it on the corn and all this kind of stuff. It's a full spectrum systemic herbicide and crop desiccate. And it's causing major and wreaking havoc on everybody because they spray it on our everything. Your oats, organ your phosphorus compounds, specifically a phosphonate that which affects. By inhibiting the plant's enzymes, the enzymes that are good for you, right? Oh, my goodness, y'all. Oh, listen to Urban Chaos. She said, hey, everyone, I got my kids back. They were taken for 20 months because I homeschooled my daughter. I won them back in court Wednesday. I Disgusting. had to share. Good job. Good job. We are winning in some of the courts, y'all. I am loving that action right there. 
But holy smokes, man, you probably went through the ringer. I'm so sorry for you right now. That's I'm so it's just so disgusting what's happening in our country. And it's our fault, our parents' fault, their parents. The stuff goes back to 1900s, you know, 13s, 14s. You know, we're all sleepy Joes. <laughs> oh, Lisa says, I quit drinking milk 47 years ago. Now I make my own kefir yogurt with raw milk. Actually, Lisa, look, I need to hear mine There's right her here. right there. These are the emergency candles, 100% beeswax. They have, what is it, like 10 hours or something? No, it's longer than that. No, they burn a long time. Yeah, it's like a long time. It he loves you a long chat. time. That's a big fat beeswax candle. It's called the emergency candle. And you can see how it stands right up. You know what I mean? You're going to hurt people's ears. See that? It stands right up. See that? And they're cute. They look like a big fat fan. Yeah. But there's only a limited supply. When they're out this time, we won't oversell them like we did last time. And then we'll have some at the conference. We'll have everything at the conference if you guys want to get it there too. And uh, hopefully we'll see you at the conference because it is going to be lit. We got like 300 kids are going to be there. All their parents. It's almost sold out. We only have a, like literally a couple hundred tickets left. I think we're going to do it. I don't really care. I hope we do. The whole town's counting on it. I've been telling them, here we come. <laughs> so they're all nervous. So we oh, hope to see you guys there. Uh, Jane says, she said, I really suffered anxiety from being told I would grow a watermelon from swallowing a seed. How many? We all did. And we, the we, gum tree. Remember the gum tree in your stomach you were going to grow? Yeah. <laughs> well, the watermelon, if you guys do a lot of it, you, you eat the seeds, just chew them really good. Because you'll get, it's just like, you know, you're, get a, it's like a little vitamin pill. So and thanks, good. Murphy's. I just finally got around to opening up your, uh, your sin den all the way from Idaho in November. Right? I'm like flipping through that stuff, and there it is. Idaho. Idaho. Iowa. I don't know why it's Idaho. It's easy to confuse. But thank you for always being in our corner. We love you guys. Part of that is our family, too, you know. So, you guys, just so you know. <laughs> what do you guys use to get rid of parasites in the human body? That's a good question. Truth seeker. Tell them, Stacey. Well, we have the a big thing for me, honestly, is just to have a good, have a really, really good, clean diet. Fasting, too. Fasting is just absolutely amazing. Um, you know, they're going to want to eat on things that are high carbohydrate or sugar. So, you know, not ingesting those kind of things. I would... I, person, this is what I would do. I can't tell you guys what to do. Just do your research on a lot of these. There's things. a lot of ways to approach this. We'll give yes. you several. So I just, you know, you know, just through fasting, you know, if you haven't fasted before, you know, maybe try doing some bone broth. If you make homemade bone broth, it's very filling, full of nutrition and um, very healing. Because um, parasites just don't like it. Well, and just by by eating things that they don't like, you know, yeah, you, they're you not could feeding just them. Eat. eat you know, good grass-fed meats and some eggs. You know, I would not be eating any carbohydrate type like breads, pasta, cereals, crackers like that. Definitely no sugary sweets, no donuts, you know, no pasta, any anything. I would just be doing maybe some greens. Um, maybe I might fast for a day or two. I, I could do a liquid fast with the bone broth or maybe uh, do some intermittent fasting where maybe I don't eat anything for 16 or 18 hours doing that for a while. And just making sure I'm drinking, you know, good water. Like, here's the other thing. We've been talking about water filters and all that. Mm -hmm. You know, there are some good ones, but a lot of these, you know, like even the, the pure water filters, the little pitchers, they really don't do that great of a job. So reverse osmosis, if you're not sure, that's a great way to go. And then when you do the reverse osmosis, then you want to replenish it with minerals. So using your unrefined sea salt like Redmond. from Redmond, and then you can put that back in. So uh, making sure you're getting good, clean water with the minerals um, and just you, you just want to give your body a lot of stuff that it needs. Um, another thing that everyone's mineral deficient. man. <laughs> yeah. Between and dehydrated mineral deficient and iodine is like and magnesium. Oh, my goodness. Those would be your key ones. Yeah, because we're not getting it from the soil. No, you're not getting it from anything. And everything is made as a desiccant. So everything's ripping it out of your body, stealing, 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 stealing. You know, getting out in the sun, grounding, you know, we take all these things for granted. How simple and easy is it 
you know, we've been in these rubber soled shoes our whole life. You know, you don't ever take them off. We have no connection with the earth. Getting out in the sun, being barefoot, getting connected back with the earth. All these things are just really just so helpful. And then just like I say, you know, eating maybe what you are raising, you know, those things are very important if you're growing your fruits or vegetables. Um, but if I was doing the, I wouldn't even do any fruits at all. You know, you know, you can do your leafy greens, um, you know, some maybe cruciferous vegetables would be amazing. You know, you can steam some broccoli or some cauliflower and, uh, you know, like lean meats or eggs and then just live like that for a while and just see how it goes. Just make sure you're taking good care of yourself, doing, the, you know, good minerals and see how it goes. Okay. Okay. Now there are, you know, you can, you can look online. There's different, like, cause I know the Amish around here and, um, foot check. What are you doing? Foot check. He's not, he's barefoot. They, they do, they, there's a wormer that they like to do and they always started on the full moon and it, it's, uh, it's a combination of, uh, wormwood, black walnut, hell and clothes because it gets through all the cycles of the worms. And then you do that like for two weeks and then you wait and then you'll do it again another two weeks so that you go through the whole cycle. Um, and that's uh, like a tincture that you can put in water. It tastes terrible. So it's probably better like in a juice or something. Um, Doug and I do that. I try to do that like once a year. Um, but generally, I like to deal with all my things. If I try to stay healthy, um, eat correctly, uh, definitely doing some fast, a liquid fast. That's generally what we would do. But always do your research. You know, I'm just saying this is what we do. Wormwoods and black walnut. I mean, there's a lot of good old home remedies. That's what stuff. I said, and cloves, those three. Yeah. yeah. But that's not always an issue. You know, some people have, there's a lot of people have issues and they think, oh, maybe it's this or that. The big one for most of people that have issues is mold in their house. Yeah. So if you notice that maybe you're just snotty all the time or you have headaches, maybe skin problems a lot, you could possibly have mold. Mold is everywhere, even in these newer homes, like when they're building homes and then you, they're outside before they can get everything on it um, and it's all framed up. A lot of houses have mold in them. So check. All right. I held it back. He was good. Listen, it's not the mold. What I found was, like a lot of the stuff we're relearning, we have to relearn everything we've been lied to so much. But what I'm finding is, okay, that the mold is everywhere. Like she says, it's good for us. Yeast is in the air. No, mold is bad. Hold on. Slow down. Black mold. Okay. So the mold is not the problem. What happens is, though, when the mold lands on the material, okay, that's the problem because mold starts to break the material down. That's where you get the problem is the man-made toxic materials that are leaching out from the mold just doing its job and surviving. Okay, we get mushrooms from mold, a lot of good stuff, but penicillin comes from mold. Mold is good. They got you scared of the mold, but I'm telling you, what I'm finding on my research, and I'm still looking into it, please look into it yourself, but it's the breaking down of what the spores are on that causes the problem. Yeah, well, and black mold is going to be on your, you know, wherever, on your drywall. And that's a problem because it's the drywall. Bad. That's the problem. I don't know. You guys remember a bunch of years ago when they were getting all that drywall in from China and it was totally 100% toxic and people were getting sick like nobody's been. Remember that? Oh, remember that? They had toxic drywall from China here and they were building houses like crazy and a lot of houses had to rip out the whole place. You guys remember that? Leave a comment if you remember that. So that's what it is. It's the it's the it's not the black mold or any of the mold spores or anything like that. It's no, just, black mold's bad. It's just the fact that they're landing on the material and then disintegrating it, and then it releases that gas into the air, and that's what gets you sick. All right. Yeah, Deborah says they're trying to buy local. We asked you should. to check them out. I'm serious. You know, just really start. I have had a major epiphany ever since the cheese thing. <laughs> we were talking about all the, the microbial enzymes and using the genetically modified stuff and the soy and all that to make the rennet. Okay, which... hold on. Let's get a recapper in case you missed it. I'm going to give you guys a free recapper on that story right there. Let me find it real quick while Stacy's talking. Ed Nye says, I am starting to do like you. If I do not grow it, then I am not going to eat it. 
That's right. It is. And you're like, oh, you know, I used to get that. I can't get that anymore. <laughs> Whatever. It, you do think everything because, you know, you like look around and I see everyone getting sick. All, all the all time. This. You know, there's something going on, you know. I mean, it is besides everything that they're spraying in the sky, who knows, then your food. You know, we need to try to do the best that we can. And we really need to stop your cravings. You know, look at all the time you spend cooking and doing your dishes and all that. You don't have to eat all the time and all the time. You know, way back when people would eat one meal a day, two meals a day. Sometimes they would fast a day because they didn't have any food. So we need to kind of go like that. That's how I feed Molly, our dog. Same way. Some days. <laughs> Me she too. Eat. She feeds I feed him. Time days saying, on I'll, tell you, I'll tell him. I said, you're going to fast today because I'm going to be gone. All right. So, check it out. Gotta, we're going to do the cheese. I'm going to give you guys the cheese breakdown from this kid, right, who's jumped on the story. And I want you to listen to what he says. Then you can make sure you share this video with your friends. We're giving you all the information as fast as we can. And here it is. According to their FDA notice letter, Christian Hansen inserts genes from a cow and camel into a genetically modified black mold called A. niger. The inserted gene starts the production of chymosin in the A. niger microbes, which are then fermented and purified. Since the genetically modified microbes are removed from the final product, the rennet is not considered a GMO product itself. Just like Pfizer, Christian Hansen received generally recognized as safe status to start selling their FPC rennet. GRAS status allows food and chemical companies like Christian Hansen to submit their own products as generally recognized as safe for their intended use to avoid FDA's pre-market review and safety testing. Christian Hansen recently merged with the biotech and biopharmaceutical company Novozymes to produce Novonesis. From what I can find, they are the main producer of FPC rennet, which as a whole is used to make around 90% of American cheese. Their Chimax rennet contains 0.5 to 1% sodium benzoate as a preservative and also a caramel color. When the FPC rennet is used, the label would most likely say vegetable rennet. This is confusing to customers because when you see vegetable rennet on an ingredient list, you assume it's naturally made from vegetables. You probably wouldn't suspect that it's made from fermented and purified GMO black mold with a cow gene. There are other kinds of real vegetable rennet made from artichokes, dried caper leaves, fig juice, ground ivy, nettles, or thistle, but these are rarely used because of supposed bitter aftertaste. So when you see cheese companies like Tillamook, who commented on my last video saying their rennet is not considered genetically engineered and is not made by a pharmaceutical company, they are telling a half truth. Like I said in my previous video, the input ingredient is genetically modified, but the end product in the cheese is not. And while Christian Hansen is not a pharmaceutical company, they are a biosciences company that just merged with a biotech and biopharmaceutical company. So why is FPC rennet used? Well, the two big reasons are that animal rennet is more costly and there's societal stigmas surrounding calf rennet, despite the fact that it's a byproduct of the veal industry. That's it. So on one hand, you would think there's no way that this can be healthy. Well, on the other, you would think, well, the GMO microbes are not even in the final product. So how is this cheese any different? The simple answer is we don't know for sure and need more testing and research to be 100% certain. With that being said, genetically modified black mold microbes are removed during purification and only small amounts of chymosin is used to make the cheese. Your decision on whether or not you feel comfortable eating cheese made with FPC rennet is totally up to you. Our health agencies tend to side with chemical and food companies well, I tend to be on the side of caution. And let me know in the comments below if I should make a complaint. All right, so there you go. That's what we're trying to tell you guys. Yeah, so homemade cheese. We're going to learn how to make mozzarella cheese. Animal rennet is where it's at. That's what we've been using for thousands of years, y'all. Animal rennet is where it's at. And we already have the byproduct. All they're trying to do, I think, in my opinion, is create all these new revenue streams by all this garbage. But they want to get rid of all the cows. Look what they're doing to right. the synthetic milk, and they're doing... Well, that's with, why, because yeah. then they're going and to be like, look, we don't have enough cows for all this. We don't have enough this for this and this and this. They create the problem so they can offer the solution. Okay. There you go. So, what else would you guys think about all this lovely stuff? That's just a little something I got on my ex, you know what I mean? Like, if you guys aren't following me on X, maybe you should. But, you know, there's a lot of information out there, you guys. If you just spend a little time looking for it, you know, they count on the basic slogan is teach them everything about nothing. 
We need to get pumped up, man. And, and start you paying need attention to, to our food, water, and shelter. And and seriously, and good food, you know, and, and learning. And here's my big one. Start making your own salad dressings if you haven't. Oh, it's man, so that's a big one. so easy to do. So, so easy. You can use it as a marinade. You can use it on your, um, you know, salads and things. And I'll tell you, if you don't know, this is just a simple, easy one. It's just two parts extra virgin olive oil, one part of... Um, raw apple cider vinegar and one part of maple syrup or raw honey. You can do either one. Put it in a mason jar, shake it up, and then put it on your salad. It tastes amazing. Some people put herbs in it. You can put, you know, whatever you want. But that's just the basic one because it's going to be very shelf stable that way. With the two parts, extra virgin olive oil, one part raw apple cider vinegar, and one part honey or one part maple syrup. What's Maybe the that? company that has the good rennet? We found a place that has some good Wal rennet. We're not affected or Wal affiliated Curry. or anything with them at all. Look it up. Is it over there on the uh, icebox? Mm. Yeah. No, it's not the on the cheese icebox. making place. Yeah, the cheese making. It's right place. over there on the icebox. Yeah, I know, but I, it's, I don't. Just, it I'm just going to show it to them. There's they can just look it up. I don't. We don't have an aff uh, affiliation with them or nothing. You know what I mean? Like we're just getting the products because we're going to make our own cheese. Us and the Murphys, we're making our own cheese. You guys should probably look into making your own cheese. And we're going to learn how to make mozzarella at the conference. Try to get as least of these chemicals in your body as you can. Okay? The the name of the rennet that we use is it's Walkeren. I think W-A-L-C-O-R-E-N. Walkeren. And think. this place has it? Yeah, let me look at Let me see. That's right. I think that's right. They don't do very good with their yeah. marketing here. here I can't even tell what their website is. Here, you can look at it. Let me get the picture. What is it? Oh, there you go. All right. You guys just go hunt that down. Okay. Screenshot it right now and then go hunt it down. Find the best price you can. That's on made it. pristinely. Because a lot of these animal rennets, they're putting these terrible preservatives and colors in your rennet, too. Screenshot. The animal rennet. Write it down. That's a good as, one. Get as much as you can. You know what I mean? So that way you can make your own stuff and you'll be off good making it. We do feed our dogs every day. We just don't feed them three, four, five, six times a day. No, we I don't, don't feed Molly every we day. We don't have a bowl out for them all the time. Sometimes she hunts. You know, it depends. Yeah, I'll, she'll eat like uh, Molly. Like today, Molly ate... Did I feed her this morning? I can't remember. Yeah, I fed her this morning. So yesterday she fasted. So today I, I fed her this morning and I'm going to give her a little snack tonight. Tomorrow she'll just eat one time. But generally, she generally she eats one time a day. And she never knows when she's going to eat. It could be in the morning. It could be lunchtime. It could be at 2 o'clock. Um, sometimes if I feed, we get up early and go. I'll give her two meals morning at night if we're out running around. But that's how she is. So, and she doesn't argue. Yeah, Monica, you can watch our videos anytime, anywhere on YouTube for free. This video will end here in about five or ten minutes. And then it'll take a little bit to upload to YouTube. And then it'll be later on tonight. You can watch it. And then all day tomorrow and the next day and the next day. The live videos on Sunday are always under the live tab. I'm not sure some of y'all even know how to work YouTube. This is the crazy part about it. Right? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't know how to do anything. All right, that's called a home page on YouTube. Okay, so on the home page, if you just go to YouTube and you type in Doug and Stacy, you can see all these tabs. There's videos, home tab, videos, shorts, and then there's a live tab. So if you hit the live tab, it's going to have all the live videos, right? Every live video, every Sunday night is going to be right there. So if you missed one, you can go watch them. Then it's going to have playlist, right? So you can hit a playlist. If you want to learn about um, you know, how we poop in buckets and use it for compost on the homestead. Well, then there's a whole playlist for walking you through the whole thing. If you ever wanted to keep bees, if you ever wanted to build a um, ICF root cellar, if you ever wanted to collect firewood, and we got some field trip Fridays, which were really fun that me and Stacy used to do on every Friday. We used to take our YouTube uh, peoples out for field trips. And then if you ever wanted to learn fermenting, Right, you could get Stacy's book, and then you got visuals too. You could walk, we have walk you through all these fermenting ideas. So, we have these are called playlists, and then there's a community tab. Uh, that's what I posted today. It says, We live in a time where intelligent people are being silenced so that stupid people won't feel offended. So, that's a community tab, and that's lit. I post a lot of good stuff in there, a lot of information that you guys can follow okay. along with, and, and that's the last thing on there. Yeah. Oh, and then Viva Cristo Ray says, why would I do that to my dog? 
You know what? She lives on a farm. She steals eggs all the time. She yeah, catches she's things. All she eats all the time. Yeah. She is not. She's not dependent she's not on at all. Us. She's not at all. Yeah. If she was hungry, she would come and bug me. Yeah. So no, my dog's fine. Easy if she's tiger. hungry. And if she if she Easy runs tiger. and works really hard, I'll yeah. feed her more. I mean, I'm with her we, and I know we what love she our needs. animals around here. Yeah. 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 Especially our canine. That she's part of our pack, me and Stacy's pack. Yeah, she does a lot of work. Yeah. And when she works hard, she eats a lot more, That's just right. like we do. But you know that's why she's not fat, overweight, and lethargic. She's out right now hunting and moving and shaking and doing her thing, watching the perimeter fence, making sure no nighttime animals are coming around here. She's not just out laying on the porch. Hope I don't look outside. She's... Where is she inside here? Did she come in? Where is she? No, she's outside. She yeah. was working. Remember, she was running the fences when we came in. Man, maybe next weekend we could pull off a, a live show from the garden. Let's do that. Oh, uh, Richard, Richard. Richard Briner Jr. He says, this is so funny that you're bringing this up because I have tried to do this. He says, do double yolk eggs produce two chicks or two headed chick? I have been trying to do this for a couple of years. I, oh, if I get a double yolk, I'll put it under a chick and it's never hatched for mm -hmm. me. So if anyone in our beautiful group here has ever hatched a double yolk egg, let me know. Because I, I thought it would be cool to do and see what happens. So I don't know, but I've tried to put it under hens before. But it's never worked yet. We even tried incubating it, like in the incubator. So I've done it both ways. The incubator it didn't hatch, and then we did it under a, you know, a hen. All right. So let's. Man, see. hope to see you guys at the conference. We are going to have so much fun at the conference. Man, is it going to be lit! Live in person. Good stuff. Yeah. All right. Okay. Because we're about ready to get out of here now. We're 51 minutes in. We're going to cut it short right at an hour. Everyone's time is valuable. And boy, did we give you some information in this one. I even Googled up some of those uh, <laughs> ingredients for you guys. This is off the chain. Look up anhydrous ammonia. Anhydrous that's all over the ammonia. Country. Right now, every farmer in North America is drilling that into their soil. Anhydrous ammonia. Then go from when you say, wow, that's crazy. Now go look, where does it come from? And a lot of this stuff, I did a video about this some years ago, but then I took it down because I was nervous because we have neighbors around here that are pretty heavy on that, and I didn't want to have any problems around here. I think I re-released it, but no one watched it, but... I deep dived on where that came from, why we're using it, and it's disgusting. And it says flammable, hazardous material. I mean, it's just not good. Look up anhydrous ammonia. Every farmer right now is drilling it into the ground. So Art for God says, people say if you feed your dog eggs, they will eat chickens or raw meat and eat livestock. No. Nope. The thing is, is if I like went and picked up a chicken out of the chicken coop, and then I killed it and I gave it right to her. You know, maybe that might do it. But she's getting the meat, um, the eggs. No, I mean, I, you know, I'll crack an egg in her pan or whatever. And um, sometimes I will say if there's an egg laying in the middle of the yard, she'll it's not in the coop. She's, she'll take those yeah. because they're they're not in the coop where I told her no. And I, I train my dog. When she was young, she follows me wherever I go. And then when then she won as a puppy, it does take work to train a farm dog. You can't expect them to be perfect. So when you see them maybe sticking their head in there trying to get an egg out of the nest, you'll tell them no, you know, but you got to be on it a few times. They're just like kids. So you have to train them. And that goes back to feeding yeah. our dog too, because if she was really super hungry, she'd be out there murdering chickens and eating all those eggs, but she's not. And a lot of that's our training. And a lot of that's just that she's satisfied. And she likes to protect them. Those are her, her she's a very good livestock dog. Horseradish travels in your garden. Yeah, horseradish likes to move around. They so, get pretty big. Ju yeah, goes, Julie, goes, goes. yeah, if you have horseradish, put it away, like, in the middle of your yard somewhere, away from everything, because whatever it's by, nothing's going to want to grow by it either. Because the roots are pretty big, you know, and it just needs to be all by itself, away from it. It doesn't play well with others at all. So you don't want it. And it does travel. You could cut it down. It's just going to keep coming up. Claudine, there's no reason why you have to have any raw milk. You know, the Western world is the only place, you know, besides like kefir or cheese or, you know, something like that. But, you know, drinking it out of the gallon and pouring it on cereal, 
That's the only place <laughs> happening this year. Yeah, you got, you know, a lot of people, like, I don't drink, I don't drink milk. I mean, I'll do kefir and yogurt, and I'll do some, you know, cheeses, um, but I don't just drink milk. Um, yeah, you can live just fine. I, I used to, man. I had to take that gallon of milk, boy. <laughs> and I was sick. And I wish, if you guys just tuned in, make sure you watch the front of the video. We gave you guys a lot of good food information. One is about milk, and I think you'll find it pretty interesting. And then we talked about some watermelon information. And did you want to do some seed stuff? We did for Paraquat. Quick, quick. No, that, that the Paraquat. wonderful, the wonderful company using fifty six thousand pounds of Ugh. that toxin Paraquat um, on their almonds, their pistachios, and on pomegranate. Pond juice. Do not use Pond half juice. and half. It's half and half a yucky. <laughs> Even if it says organic, don't use half and half. <coughs> Man, they got us in the trick bag big time. Man, I see why they call us deplorables and they laugh at us and stuff, man, because we are really lapping it up. Really lapping it up. And that all this does is it makes the hospital beds fuller, the pills being pushed fuller, you know, all that stuff is going on. And their quality of life goes down. You can't figure it out. Doctor doesn't want to. So go, go, go. And then it's game and over. And then someone's asking about a liver detox. I cannot tell you guys. Like, the castor oil packs are, like, groundbreaking. Mm. Earth shattering. Mm. What they can do for a person's health. Mm. Because this is your major filter. Your liver is your major filter. And it's going to be your detoxifier. And if it's clogged up with all the junk going on, like all the paraquat that we're ingesting from the pomegranate stuff or from the pistachios or possibly from the watermelon, from the dyes and that calcium carbide and all that stuff that people are ingesting, the skies, everything, your liver needs a little help. So it, we have it on our website. It's uh, You could go there and you can get castor oil and get the castor oil pack. It's, the pack is wonderful because it can be kind of messy because castor oil is very thick, but it's a very gentle detoxification where anybody can do it. You just put it on, you wrap it on, it's very, it's not going to leak or make a problem like normally castor oil would, and you go to sleep in it. And if you don't want to do that, you can just do it on when you're in the house cleaning or whatever, hanging out one day on the weekend. You know, and if you do regular castor oil um, packs, you just, you know, the proof is in the pudding, they say. By trying some of these things for your health, they're very inexpensive and they do major wonderful things for your body. So, and it's a very gentle way to detoxify the body. And that is the problem for us. You know, the body can heal itself through a lot of problems, but the problem is, is we're all clogged up, especially in your liver. You know, maybe people aren't sweating. Maybe they're using aluminum deodorant, not letting, you know, let, you're not able to let the toxins out. Maybe you're sitting too much and you're not moving to get the lymphatic system moving. So by dry skin brushing to help with that, doing a liver detox, you know, but doing a castor oil pack, those things are so, so helpful. So we had talked about it quite a few weeks ago. Um, a lot of people got the castor oil packs and did the liver detoxes and they said that they feel great. It helps a lot. It helps with a lot of problems if you're suffering from fibroids for a lot of people. There's tons and tons, thousands of testimonies on that. Um, and just helping you just feel good, getting rid of the brain frog, giving you energy. So if you guys are interested in, you know, things like that, do your research on castor oil packs. And if not, you can get a discount. You can go through our link. Yeah, go to um, and you can get the castor oil Stacey in the glass out. bottle, or you can get the castor oil pack. Yeah, but those things are all most just people so get helpful. them together. Yeah, off grid with Doug and Stacy .com. Hit the shop tab. You can check out everything that we like and everything we like. We've secured you discounts on, so you guys can save money. There you go. Oh, and then Doug says, "Do I get gross grow any horse riders tips?" It just grows wherever <laughs> it doesn't. You don't They're really need hardy. to do any tips. Yeah. yeah, it's really. I have a huge, beautiful patch, and he put the mulch pile over it. He's mowed over it. There's been a huge mulch pile over it for all that. But it's year. by the compost pile too, and it grows like. Well, a you piece. just moved, but you just moved it, and then it's in front of the greenhouse now. Yeah. He moved some dirt. It grows good. It's everywhere, and then I just moved like a little twig, and I put it in front of the our out our fence and our our what do you call it? My garden, and already at this year it's like this big already. So you don't want to put it 
in a low area where there's a lot of water. Just, you know, a nice draining place somewhere where it has some okay soil and it'll do amazing. I've seen horseradish do great under big trees. Um, like in the shade, I've seen the horseradish do great in the direct sun. Um, just if it has some pretty halfway decent soil, it should be fine. All right. Yes, we grow grapes. We're almost there. <laughs> I might get grapes this year. <laughs> Stay tuned. Con Concord grapes, <laughs> yeah. It's been a struggle, man, because these chickens. They'll pick you dry. <laughs> well, it was just the first time we did our, our grapes. They were in, we had them and they were in the middle of the yard and we were gone when we planted them and then the chickens pecked them down to nothing and then they I put things over them and they grew back and then Molly took the tops off to play with them and it's a long story. And so then the chickens ate them again. So then we moved them and now they're growing. So if you get the cod liver oil, you know, what if you, you like talking? liquid or pills, it's up to you. I mean, they're both, I guess, just as good. I'll just tell you for a lot of you, you know, you have to watch out the pills, what they put in them. Oh, the casing. The case, inside, yeah, all that the, kind of stuff. Oh, so that's a whole nother balls of wax. If, if you are good, you know, with the cod liver oil, I prefer the lemon, like the lemon flavor, the cod liver oil in the liquid and just take it. Um, that way and that way when you're doing it directly you're automatically getting it into the body you know you're absorbing it very quickly it doesn't have to break down in the tablet but some people can't do it so they do the tablet so it's yeah, your, your preference we plant the melons and the squash on a hill because we like they like to be drained and they're going to vine out and produce a lot of food so we want it to be kind of elevated and then it can really move out and about and stay dry so if you are growing if you've never done this before and let's say you're growing your melons in a just a flat garden like dirt on the ground you need to make mounds so you need to make mounds and then you can put like holes maybe a couple holes in there and then put your seeds like three seeds or so i do three or four seeds you can put in there and then move on to the next mound. So, but you need little mounds and then they'll come out from there. Tammy, we're not doctors or anything, but she was prescribed estrogen this week by her doctor. And she said, no way, I'm not taking that. Yeah, or look into, you know, bioidentical hormones possibly, you know, and see. I don't know, man, these last five years woke me up. I mean, I was already there really good, pretty good. But man. This is stone cold crazy. Another sixty billion dollars for Ukraine and all this stuff, man. <laughs> so I see. Oh. Woo! We are. We you guys better buckle up. I keep trying to warn you about twenty twenty four, man. We're rolling into this election. You remember what happened the last election year? <laughs> right around this time, we we were coming back May. Oh no! This was it was it was March when it happened. March. February got back and it started March, yeah. the first of March. Yeah. Oh my God. So I, there's a lot of people. Veronica. Who else? Yeah, we use apple cider vinegar to wet your hair. There's I've seen a bunch of people talk about cataracts. Look into research about uh, just. You know, like I wipe my eye makeup off and my eyes, I put, or you can put it on your eyelashes. Castor oil. Castor oil is very healthy. A lot of times, there's lots of people. Lots of people I'm say. I'm not saying, this is what I do. And there are people who do say that this it helps with that. by the FDA. It helps with that. Yeah. Shut the fuck. So, um, and also, uh, you know, your eyes are affected by what you eat. Oxidative damage occurs when you're, you know, to your body by things that you're eating that aren't good for you. You know, so make sure you're eating nutrient dense foods. There's two think um, compounds, lutein and zeaxanthin, that are very good for your eye health. Say it again. Lutein, L U T E I N. Yes. And the other one is zeaxanthin. It's Z E A X A N T H I N. Zeaxanthin, I think. Are you from India? <laughs> <laughs> and so. Uh, oh, settle down. Oh my gosh! When I at my school, we had uh, we had a lot of little children, and they were awesome on uh, the spelling bees. So that's the joke. Yeah. So um, look into foods. A lot of your leafy greens and all that they're they're loaded in lutein and zeaxanthin. You know your farm fresh eggs, all these things. Look at foods. Just Google search foods that are high in lutein and zeaxanthin, and start eating those. That's great for your eye health, and just. I'm telling you guys, 
also look into your intermittent fasting or doing a fast because it's incredible what it can do to the body. Just incredible. Um, it's in your scriptures, Joe. How many times is fasting in your scriptures? Literally, how many times have you ever actually fasted? Seriously, serious question. It's in your scriptures quite a bit. Personally yourself, reflect for a second. How many times have you personally ever fasted? Leave it down in the comments down below. Hold yourself accountable a little bit. And so maybe try it. Neil Log says, is fasting all you do to detox? No. No. Um, I think a big one is, so your detoxification organs, are, a big one is your skin. So sweating is very crucial to detoxifying. So sweating is important. So in the summertime here, we don't have air conditioning. It, it's a whole summer long full of detoxification because we're sweating and working. I work out, I sweat, you know, I'm moving and all that. So that is helping one of my detoxification organs. The other one is making sure that you are having regular bowel movements. Yeah. The foods that you're eating will affect how you poop. You have to be pooping once a day. Every day, baby. Every day, bro. Day. <laughs> every day, bro. Yeah, or, I, I got to poop every day, bro. Or more than Neil Log. Day. Look, check it out, Neil Log. Come on. You think I'm just going to jive you? Come on, you guys. You guys got to get your head in the what game a doing? little bit. What is that? This is the shop tab on Off Grid with Doug and Stacy. Okay. You scroll down. Here's the books. There's the books. There's the books. Okay. You got to keep going, right? Like, hang in there. There's We got some stuff on here. There's the T. You guys could pick up a tea strainer. Those things are awesome. All stainless steel. There's our candles. Okay. Come on, Neo Log. Hang with me now. There's the candles. There's the stitches. You can get the stitches. There's my booklet. There's my, if you want to live off grid, I even have a little booklet to get you started. It saved people thousands of dollars. Like some people, hundreds of thousands. They've, I've gotten letters and I've got the proof. All right, then you keep going down here. There's a little, little, little stuff about cute families and buying our... <gasps> There's Mason Tops, you guys. There's Clyde's Garden Planner. There's Redmond. You can get your salt right there at a discount and your bentonite clay. You guys should be having your preps loaded up. There's the Sun Oven. Neo Log, here we go. Ba-da! Queen of Thrones right there. Pretty sure that's what that says, isn't it? Yeah, Queen of Thrones. Says that's it right the there. Castor oil, yeah. oil, right there. You click that link and it takes you right to them. You don't even got to use the code. But if you ever catch yourself uh, screwing around in their website, just type in off grid at checkout. So right seeds, so you guys can get your, everything you guys need to live a self sufficient life is in our links and saves you money. Dr. Jer Jones Herbal Course, it can take care of you and your family. There's our cool t shirts. And then Dr. That's Jones it. is going to be at the conference and he's going to do some really cool talks about herbs for yourself and your animals and first aid emergencies and then things you can do with herbs from your kitchen. So hope he'll, that'll be really cool. And then good times. I almost said with Jen and Steve, she says our beagle would kill chickens anytime. How to train them. So the big thing with Spend that. Spend some time. With well, I would get one of those the shot, shot collar. collars um, and you can, there's a first thing you do is you can beep them first. So you don't have to shock them. So you beep them first. And then from there, if that doesn't work, then you can go ahead and go with the lightest one. And then that seems to work very well. See, so, uh, somebody there. says that they were drinking the Soleil and they started dropping deuces in the toilet quickly. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it helps loosen you up. You guys, Well, we, because we promise you that you're all with low on minerals, low on water. Dehydration is running rampant. Well, but drinking water, most not people tap drink, water. But you can't drink. You most people are dehydrated because you're not able to absorb the water. The water. So you don't want to just drink. You should be really. This is how you should do it. You should be carrying your water with you all the time. Get you know everyone's got the little stainless steel things and just all day long just sip sip sip. And if you don't, what I also do, I like to do this. I like to stick my finger in a little salt, put it on my tongue, and every time I drink water. I'll put a little couple little granules of salt on my tongue and then I drink it and I just do it all day long. And you don't want to just guzzle all your water at one time because it's going to go right through you and you're not going to get any minerals. Shalom. Type in, you know, eyes off grid with Doug and Stacy. Just type that in eyes, E Y E S off grid with Doug Those and Stacy. Those are Stacey. exercises. Yes. Just type that in. If you guys have anything bothering you or you want to know about anything in the garden, anything off grid, just type in like, 
How do I grow the biggest onions? Off Grid with Doug and Stacy, And this is going to pop up in your search engine. You can watch the videos that we have specifically all about it. Hit that thumbs up if you haven't already. We're about to wrap it up here tonight. Hey, wait, Lady Jane says, raw diet made my dog more aggressive noticeably. So, Lady Jane, just cook it. Just, you know, try a cook diet and see what happens. Okay? Very simple. And what we also do is, um, you know, we set the food down and we tell Molly to sit and we don't let her have the food until we say it's okay. And then she goes to the food. So maybe if if the dog really likes the food and then you're not having any disciplines on the discharge of said food, maybe it's scavenge time. So he, he's really going in after it. You know what I mean? So. Oh, and then we were talking about parasites too. So MH says pumpkin seeds will are good for parasites too. So like Doug and I tonight in our salad, I, I had leftover meat from taco night. So then I went ahead and made a pizza with the meat. So I made a salad also tonight for dinner and we, Almost every day, because it's good for prostate pumpkin seeds. I do the sprouted pumpkin seeds, and they're wonderful. Make sure when you get them, you chew them very good, um, and it's helped. So, like, once you, you know, are good, and you're starting to eat good and feeling good and all that, just make sure you're putting foods like that into your daily diet. It's very helpful. And then in the morning, Doug and I, we always will do an organic lemon you know, I put a little teaspoon of Soleil and then half of the organic lemon in a, a cup of water and he drinks it and I drink it every morning right after, you know, we've gotten up. Yes, so. Dr. Leo was here. We had a fabulous visit. I have all the good. He's got to do the video. Uh, yeah, he hasn't done the video. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'll give it, yeah, it'll be coming. I want to get you guys this video on swarm trapping so you can get your swarm traps put up. Catch you guys some free bees. Yeah, just type in S-O-L-E. Holistic Patriots, S-O-L-E, Off Good with Doug and Stacy. That's it. Yeah, get your Redmond salt in bulk. We get we have bags of Redmond salt laying around, y'all. Yeah, I have two. And we have bentonite clay because we make the clay gel for burns and all kinds of other emergencies on the homestead. I mean, we have to have all this stuff ready to go. We have garlic and honey on the ready all the time. You know, you, you can't make this stuff right when you need it. It needs to be sitting around and on the ready. Oh, Carrie's asking me about how the electroculture is coming along. We're just getting started. Yeah, well, things are just starting. I, it was I, freezing today. I only, oh, we got to 20. No, it was 27 it was, last night. I don't care. It was, it was cold today. We were out there. Woo! The wind was blowing. I, had, I was yeah, like, man. I had to cover. my Some of my uh, potatoes are this high. I covered everything. Because we were coming off 70s for a second. Yeah. We thought we were getting into spring and everything. I'm going to have to cover everything tonight, too, because it's going to get cold. Again. Yeah. Um, so my electroculture, I only have, I got, I need to go and get more um, copper wire to make more to put in my beds. Um, but the one that it's in, they're, they're doing great. <laughs> and I'll tell you the Kennebec, I put some Kennebec potatoes in later and actually they're coming up quicker than they normally would. So I'm interested to see when I do my other stuff, what's going to happen. Carla, the, the difference is if you just pour the amount of castor oil you need in a particular area to get into the skin and work in, it's very messy. And that's why you get the pack so you can put it on the pack and then it just kind of soaks on your body. And like then it'll that. stay there the whole yeah, night. Yeah, you can't just pour that because stuff Because when you. you do a cat, well, a lot of people, they, you know, they say they put it in your belly button or just rub it in there. You're not going to get the same effect, but if you, you want to like soak it in, if you don't, if you don't have any other option, it's still going to be better than nothing. But um, the castor oil needs to be used with organic cotton or wool. Yeah, that's very important. When if you if 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 you make your own, you could make your own. But the cool thing is, she's designed these where they're perfect, where they don't leak. They have a nice little belt thing to wrap around you, and it's very nice. Yes. and then you can wash it. It works out great. And then you can reuse it quite a few times before you have to wash it. You don't even have to. You can leave the castor oil on there. And then just keep putting more on it for a little bit before you even, you don't have to wash it every time. And I know you have to spend like such amount of dollars to get the castor oil, you know, discount. But if you guys just pick up a pack thing and then you get that roll on with the rose ball on it, it's very bad. <laughs> very good. You know what I'm saying? Like very handy. That's what I use for my finger right here. And then that way you have a castor oil roll on, you throw it in your purse, you have it on you ready to Judy, go. Judy, the clay will be phenomenal, phenomenal for goat mastitis. Oh yes. yeah. Yes. Definitely any mastitis. Any Humans, sheep, goats, cows, 
great for Benson. I thought it was the bomb. I think I have a long, Amish, long list of, of the Amish girls that yes. use it all the time. We hipped they them to that, it. and they were on yeah. it. What were they using before? It was like a chew up deal. Cabbage. Yeah, cabbage. They heat up a cabbage and then use it. That yeah. works good too. That'll work for mastitis also. Uh, Mad Dog Bee Bread is absolutely amazing for you. Honestly, you know everyone keeps telling you. And we have right local. Little, oh, I got so much of it. We got it in the cabinet. Time. So um, they say to use raw honey that it's good for allergies. Really, what you need to take if you have bad allergies is the bee bread. So when you're pressing it, what's that? What is that? What kind of press do we have? That stainless steel press. What's that called? That, it's just a honey extractor. No, that the press. Oh, that's the press. what's oh, it called? Oh, I forget. It does apples too. It's, yeah, a, it's, it's just a, press. a press. It's a it's a press. It's, a cider it's, stay, press. it's like a stainless steel. Yeah. So we'll put our stuff in there, and then you go ahead and crank it out, and then you're gonna get this beautiful bee bread honey. Mm -hmm. um, that's what you want. It is. It's very. It's much more pricey than honey, but you don't. That's need, where all the juice is. But that's where all your benefits for your yeah. allergies. So if you get local bee bread, that's the good stuff. The really really good stuff. Or people sell. Honey with the bee bread in it, that's what you want. Because that and is the honey stuff that's with, a, you know, you want to get as much of everything raw as you can. But the bee bread is... Bottom is just honey by itself, but otherwise try to get the comb in the honey or the bee bread in the honey. And distilled water is good to get, just you have to remineralize it. So you're going to have to have to add some Redmond salt to it or, you know, like we were talking about, right? Because it's been stripped of everything. It's just <laughs> water. Jessica, she's... Jessica's watching and voting on American Idol, but we'll watch later. <laughs> Go, Jessica. <laughs> All right. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. Did you like what I sent you a song yesterday? The other day, I sent you that song. What song was it? What? No. Ain't no sunshine when oh, she's yeah. gone. When I'm gone, he is kind of sweet. He sends me love songs when I'm gone. It's kind of cute. Anytime she goes away. Man, Melody says that watermelons were $14.99 yesterday at their mom and pop grocery store in Virginia. Sandra D, because California is retarded. And in case you guys haven't noticed, they're trying to scare you away from everything natural. Everything natural. There's nothing wrong with Benson I clay. But they have to put that warning on there because of California. Okay? Man, that's the first thing you guys notice, isn't it? But meanwhile, if I go check out your cupboard, <laughs> it's got all these toxic chemicals in it that you can't even pronounce. Yeah, but that's no problem. But you see that little warning on the bed tonight, Clay, and it's, what's that? Oh, my God. What is this? Duncan Stacey, you know about that? <laughs> it is crazy, isn't it? I know. And I oh, Jana it. says she just ordered the packs. Can't Good. The packs and thought it would be helpful. Yeah, you're going to be, you might be very pleasantly amazed. I'm here, anything it's you weird. guys can do. It's it's weird because you just, it like, it might even be instantaneous after you do it. Like, you're like, wow. Um, and it's so gentle. You know, like, if you take something or even take supplements, sometimes you get nausea or anything. It's just very gentle. Very gentle. Yeah, coconut water straight from the coconut. That's good, too. Oh, it's so loaded. That's great electrolytes in coconut water. Yeah. If you haven't had watermelon drink, you haven't lived. Yeah, watermelon juice is great. And if you guys make homemade kombucha, watermelon puree in there is fabulous. Oh, it really makes it. 77 rocks minutes. It. We're done. We're done? Yeah, we got to go. All right, you guys. So that's our bang out show for tonight. Uh, we got videos coming all this week. I've been doing some, some looking around and finding some interesting stuff to talk about. We're right in the cups of World War III, just in case you haven't noticed. Uh, gas prices are kind of etching up. Gold prices are up. Silver is probably up. You know what I mean? Like, you know, something's in the air. I know you guys can see it. <laughs> we just gave all of our loot away again to foreign countries while our Maui. Where are the children in Maui? Please leave a comment down below. 1-800-MISSING-CHILDREN if you've seen any of the children from Maui. Because that seems to be a big question these days is where are they? And, uh, you know, $700 a resident in Maui and uh, $60 billion for like the umpteenth time for Ukraine. I mean, if you guys cannot see what's going on, then I probably can't help you. But <laughs> we're going to keep trying to give you guys information so you can live your best life 
and be prepared for the coming apocalypse. <laughs> oh, and Feisty One says they make ice cream from sheet milk. Sheet milk wow, is good. the bomb. I love it. I that's love good. it. I love it. I love it because it's very, it's very, it has a lot of fat in it. I think more than any other kind of milk, pretty much. Yeah. And it's wonderful. And then, um, yes, Mona. Wednesday night at the university, university. It's all about vinegar. Dot off grid with Doug and Stacy dot com. University dot off grid with Doug and Stacy dot com. If you want to join, it's all about vinegar. We're going to send out an email tomorrow about everything you guys need to have for the Wednesday night dealio for class. And we're going to make some stuff, talk about some stuff and do some stuff. Well, Mona's talking about dates are really healthy. I like, I'm like obsessed with the med jewel dates. I have them everywhere. Whenever I can find them, I get them. I put them in the refrigerator. They will last for a long time in the refrigerator, but um, they're really high in minerals. So when I was starting to heal myself, you know, I was eating a lot of sweets and stuff before. And for you to get rid of that sweet too, that's what really helped me. So if I wanted something sweet, then I would eat a date. I would, I started doing like two dates, you know, if they were big, I would only eat one, but I would eat two dates a day. And then I would sometimes go to one and that really helped me. And then eventually from just eating good foods and getting all that junk out of you, because it's a very addictive, that sugar, you keep wanting more and more. Once you start losing that addiction where you don't want it anymore, I don't really crave sweets anymore. I will say, I didn't tell you this. <laughs> yes, yesterday, we went to a farmer's market yesterday and uh, there was, there's a really good homemade ice cream place there. And um, I had lemon poppy seed. It was made out of coconut coconut milk. It was so good. <laughs> it was really good. You have to try it. And they put poppy seeds in it and it kind of it kind of crunched. It was really good. So I hadn't had ice cream or anything and I can't even tell you how long. It's probably it was years. When was the last time I had ice cream? Mm. Been a while. Yeah. So it was interesting. So but dates, I love dates. So if I do want a sweet to that is my little go to. I can, I love dates. And they're really healthy for you. But just don't eat a million of them because they're high in sugar. Don't forget, the most capable hand is at the end of your wrist. Of course, we'll be having a big old leg of lamb, and we'll be doing the Passover just like Yeshua, Yahshua did back in the day. And that, that all people should be doing to this day. When he said, do this in remembrance of me, he was sitting at the Passover. So you guys uh, have a nice night. Share this video with your friends, especially that first 20 minutes. It's a banger. If you guys got here late, go back and watch it. Thanks for all the thumbs up. If you guys want to get the tea, the candles, anything like that, that always helps support what we're doing here uh, and our families and everything, which is awesome. Plus, the Amish is awesome. And also, we're going to have a great conference where we're going to see you guys hands-on, in person, in the neighborhood. And, uh, man, this is just good stuff. That's what it's all about, man. This is what we're using social media for right here, right? So, real eyes can realize real it's like lies. We're, like, pa passing the word. Did yeah. you hear that? I yeah. did, I did. Now it's up to you guys to soldier on, share the video with your friends, get some conversation about it in some emails, fire it up, and uh, see you guys on the next video. Oh, my goodness. Night-night. See ya.